you tell me that you're sad inside I'm sad tell me that you're sad inside I'm sad what is up guys I'm Drake Morocco welcome back to the channel today we have Juice World's actual project file his raw vocals from his song smile this is a free download available for all of you guys this right here is his exact vocal chain the effects and plugins they used at all their settings where they're linked to the reverb the everything all right here with his raw vocals doubles and the beat for free to download in the link in the description. So this is the Pro Tools session that um, Smile was recorded on and it's been converted to FL. Um, so let's dive into what this sounds like without it going to a mastering engineer. This is just in FL um, and we'll see how it sounds. I do anything in my power to see you just smile. That's the song, right? Um, and again, it might sound a little different because it hasn't been sent to a mastering engineer yet. This would be the session that would get sent out. So let's hear the raw vocals. What do they sound like? You tell me that you're sad inside. I'm sad that I can't satisfy. Yeah, I pray that I get it right this time. Maybe we'll. Okay, raw vocals straight out the mic. They're really clean from the get go and you can hear kind of the compression that happens when you record. So what we have here is a fruity notebook. You can play, paste your lyrics there, but it's a CLI 2A with this setting. That way when you record, um, it's doing some compression from the mic into whatever DAW you're using. So this, um, what happens is you'll, you'll put your mic input on here, number one, set your mic and then you will link it into whatever you want. So there's two options really. Um, the first is if you're doing the verse, you're gonna link it into lead one, two, or three. Uh, these all have auto tune on it, just set it to your key. So all you gotta do is set it to, in this case, lead one, take it off the master. That way you can record with effects on, but they're not gonna be embedded into the vocal. Vo <laughs> what? Embedded into the vocal. So that's what you gotta do. There's another option. If you don't wanna do that, you can plug it into the hook here. You can plug it into lead. And then there's the doubles that are panned left and right, which is what he has in the song. There's also some other options if you wanna record with a hook spread or a radio one eighth hook or whatever you want. Um, you can record into there as well, but that way, this is automatically routing your vocals just like it would in his Pro Tools session. So that's the first record element before we hop into auto-tune in this case. This is set, um, you know, pretty chill. We got some flex tune, humanize, retune speed. And listen to what that's doing to Juice's, Juice's vocals. This is off. Oh, you tell me that you're sad inside. I'm sad. And this is on. Oh, you tell me that you're sad inside. I'm sad that I can't. Okay, just snapping it, it doesn't need much correction. It's a pretty natural sounding vocal in the first place, but this is really helping kind of enhance the perfect pitch that you would need for a radio song, obviously. Everybody uses auto-tune, so that's auto-tune, and this is getting routed directly into the Vox chain. It's also coming into here, Vox rear end, which is doing some stuff we'll cover later. You can see some compression, and it's just the high end of the vocal mixed in a little bit, almost like parallel compression but the opposite and just for the high end. So let's hop into the main vocal chain. We got an NS1, which is what I use a lot on my vocals, which is doing a noise suppression. So taking out any room noise, any clicks, pops, whatever. You could see it will come all the way down when there's no audio. And then when it's playing, it will dynamically adjust. Oh, you tell me that you're sad inside. And when it's quiet, it will go down. So then we go into the Putech EQP1A stereo which is a really common compressor. You'll see a lot of pro uh, mixing engineers use. I recently got mixed with the masters.com subscription. There's a lot of people using this. Um, by the way, a lot of techniques that come from mixed with the masters I'm gonna be making videos on for you guys for free. So make sure to stay tuned, check this out. But let's see what this is doing. Um, I believe they're using this preset here. Again, this is just the exact um, settings coming from the Pro Tools session. Uh, which I also have just replicated in FL. So this is exactly what they used. Um, I guess they used a preset for it. They've got some boost um, settings here, really just kind of fine tuning the compression, leaving the gain about the same. Listen to what that's doing. Watch the knob. Oh, you tell me that you're sad inside. I'm sad that I can't. Take it off. Oh, you tell me that you're sad inside. I'm now it might be hard to tell a difference, but take a look at our track right here you can really see that it's a level vocal from the get-go. So let's choose something more dynamic, maybe like these parts right here, listen. It's 
So maybe something more dynamic like right in this area. Take a look at the knob here. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that. And off. Let me out die soon. I don't really. Soon was a lot quieter. Again, just your first compressor. Compression after. Bro, I said it again. Every tutorial, bro. But remember, we had the CLI 2A when we recorded. So that's our first compression on the vocal. Then we come into the Fab Filter DSer. This is just doing a little DS. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. But just taking down those harsh frequencies, obviously. Then we come into another compressor. You notice we will not have done any EQ up to this point in the vocal chain. We're really just doing compression. So, so you're really getting that full natural sound. And I like it because normally I EQ my vocals. I take out the low end um, and do whatnot, but we're not doing that till the end here. Uh, we're just doing what we need to, seeing what sounds fitting to the vocal. Um, and obviously next is our 76. Uh, this is hitting a little bit harder. Take a look at this level. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. But okay, so let's listen with the beat on just to hear how it's kind of leveling it up. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. But you tell me that you're sad inside. Okay, so it's definitely leveling it out, but you notice that our vocal sounds warm, homemade, kind of garage band style, right? So really cool because it's cool to know that his vocals sounded like that at one point before they got uh, processed more so let's see what gives it that final chi final shine pew child 670 this is another compressor um and it's coming in doing 12 as the input gain which is kind of saying how much um audio level is coming into the compressor because that will affect how much compression is actually happening we've got a threshold so let's take a look at what that's doing Tell me that you're sad inside. I'm sad. Right, hitting about negative four. This is without. Will you tell me that you're sad inside. I'm sad that I can't say. Leveling it out. Not too much, and you can't hear it. These compressors I've started using are really good at not having any really tonality to them. It's just an even compressor um, that levels out your vocal, which is something that's rare, and I'm definitely going to be using more of these later. So, uh, this. These are our settings for the compressor. You see we only have two things left, and that is the SSL channel and then an L3 Ultra Maximizer. So um, this is our SSL. You see we're doing a little bit of cut here at 17 hertz just to roll off the top high end. We're also cutting here at 60 hertz. I don't know why that says 60. It says 70 right there, whatever. So that's really giving us the low cut that you would do on an EQ at first except we're doing it at the low end. And it makes sense because with a compressor, you might add in extra frequencies or whatever, and you could just do it at the end if you're just gonna cut everything at 60 in the first place. So our only EQ is this SSL. We're boosting the high ends here at 13,000 Hertz, and we're boosting those five and a half decibels. We've got here at about four and a half thousand. We're just boosting at four decibels. Same with the mid low boxy frequencies and the low frequencies, which I find really surprising. So why are they boosting the low frequencies? Well, let's find out. Let's listen to the track and see how it's sounding before the SSL. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Okay, so it fits. It's warm. It's not very, it doesn't fit in the mix too well, right? Um, but let's listen with the SSL. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. Way better. Just a little bit of EQ is all it is. So let's listen to the beat off. See what this is doing on and off. Let me out die soon. I don't really want. Let me out die soon. I don't really want. You see, we also have compression going on right here. Just copy those settings again. This is all free template. Um, you guys download it, experiment, use it on your vocals, whatever you want. Uh, check the link in the description again. So this is that. Um, we just got a little compression on that, but it's giving us that shine to the vocal uh, before we come into the L3, which is giving us that loudness factor. This is cozy and warm uh, preset. We have our out ceiling at negative 1.5. We just have our threshold at zero. Listen to what that's doing. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that. To Here's off. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that. 
Telling me I'll die soon. I don't really want that. Okay, so we can't see it on the meter here, but it is doing some leveling out almost in a multi-band compression way. If we were to lower the threshold, it would also get louder and also do more uh, adaptive EQ compression, multi-band compression. So I'll, I'll, I'll pull this threshold down, we'll listen and see what that does. Me, I'll die soon. I don't really want that to impact you, but I don't know. Man. That's where you get power. If you want power, use an L3 and um, a parallel compression. So let's go over the parallel compression real quick. This is coming in before it's routed to our sense here. It's coming into our compression, our parallel compression. So this is again um, another EQ P1A, and this is doing some, I'm assuming, brick wall. Me, I'll die soon some brick wall let's listen to that me i'll die soon i don't really want that you got a cli 2a going brick wall and another eqp one me i'll die soon i don't really want that to imp if i mix this in me i'll die soon i don't really want that to impact right just our normal brick wall parallel compression so that's what that's doing before it goes to the sends let's take a look at where this is going it's going into a flanger right here this is just a fruity flanger it had a weird um one on here before that i switched out and copied with the stock flanger because it, it was really obsolete kind of and i assumed a lot of people wouldn't have it i just decided to make it easier for you hopefully by letting you have all these plugins um, but it has the same sound so that's doing a little bit of flanger we have a little bit of air also this is a glitch you can see it says it's a pro q2 um, again i used the pro q3 uh, so this was replicated exactly with um, a parametric eq2 that's another stock plugin then we have a micro shift uh, with these settings that is giving us a little a little air on the top end of the vocal um, it's also getting sent to our plate verb. This is our verb, and this is giving us a really nice plate. You could see the settings here. Um, and then there's a Q1, which is giving us this dip. I don't know why. Again, this isn't my, I didn't make this, right? This is exactly what they used on Juice's vocals, so ask their engineer. But that's giving us our plate verb. Let me out die soon. I don't. On. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. This is how it's getting mixed into these send uh, little strings, I guess you would call them. Um, next, we've got our fourth delay. This is just a fourth H delay. Um, and then we've got our EQ. Don't know why they used the EQ here. You could have simply done it right here uh, in the filters. Extra step that I guess wasn't needed, um, but you know, why not, right? So that's our one fourth uh, delay. This is coming in also at a one eighth delay. Another H delay stereo ping pong. Got a normal feedback here. And then lastly, we have our 16th delay. So these are all getting mixed in. This is not a ping pong, however. So let's listen to everything sent in. Um, see what that sounds like. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. With the beat. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you cool but it's not there right it still sounds a little too uh, amateur so the reason is hasn't been mastered yet right this mastering here in fl or in pro tools when they made it um, is something that would probably get changed by the mastering engineer completely but this is what you would have to listen to send out to whatever first we have a linear phase multi-band eq which is doing just a little bit of cut here kind of raising the lows taking out some of the boxiness giving us some of that air. Let's hear what that sounds like if I turn off everything else. Boom, listen to this. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. Off. Let me out die soon. I don't that's doing, that's like what's really like changing the track the most, if you ask me. Again, we have another EQP1A right here, doing a little bit of compression. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. A lot of bit of compression. Then we have our SSL comp, which is a great compressor. Threshold all the way up 15. We're probably just hitting a teeny bit with really not much makeup. Let me out die soon. I don't really want that to impact you. One decibel really when it hits, just to level it out. Uh, finally, because this beat, again, produced by Nick, Nick Mira, is crunching pretty hard if we turn off uh, the mastering. So that's leveling all that out.
Next we have our Kramer Tape Stereo. Um, this is warming up, giving us a little of that airy. Got a little bit of wow flutter here. No noise, some settings here. Again, copy it or download the preset. Listen to what that does. Lastly, our WLM meter stereo is just information. We don't need to go over that, but um, we have our L3 multiband compressor again. Um, this is giving us some loudness. Out ceiling is just negative one, negative two as the threshold. Look at what's that doing. Really here at 3000 and then at the very low end, we're doing a teeny bit. You could see when the kick comes in, it's kind of taking that down just a little bit. I mean, it's really like two decibels. So that's the mastering. And if we hear a part like this, listen how much better it sounds versus when we didn't have mastering. So this is with mastering. You tell me that you're sad inside I'm sad that I can't satisfy Yeah, I pray that I get Without mastering? Oh, you tell me that you're sad inside I'm sad that I can't satisfy Again, sounds good either way. It's a great mic, great vocals, great chain, but um, make it radio ready, shiny. You have to have these elements of high end uh, to your mix. So that's what the mastering is doing. Again, there's a lot of other stuff in this template I wish I could cover. There's no more time to cover it though. I don't wanna make this video an hour long. However, you can spend hours, three hours, however many you want on this template, go through everything. There's different settings for the hook. There's different settings for these doubles here. Everything is super awesome to look through and kind of put for your own vocals. And what you can do is you can take this project file, delete all the vocals and delete the beat, and then come to macros and say purge unused audio clips. This will empty out your project, set everything level. Um, if you want, go into the auto tune or the tempo, kind of just reset that to like a default state. And what you could do then is take that project file with nothing in it, except all these chains, put that in your FL templates folder on your drive. You can Google where to find that. And then what you can do is you can do file new from template and you can choose a template, um, click this one that you saved and this will all pop up uh, for a project. So if you start a new song, you can select this and all of these different chains will be there, the plugins, their settings, um, the project is all set for you. I um, mean, you could just record your own vocals and not having to worry about rewriting this project every time you wanna use something like this. I also have my own version of a recording template for tracking coming out soon, so stay tuned for that. But hopefully you enjoyed this, this is super cool. Let me know in the comments what you wanna see next and I'll see you guys next time, I'm Trick Rock.